Good evening, and welcome to this Ash Wednesday service joint between um, both churches. I'm glad to have you here this evening. Um, Ash Wednesday is the start of Lent, and Lent is a time in which we examine ourselves and examine our faith to prepare ourselves for Easter. So this is the beginning of that, and, and helping us do that is beginning to remind us of this service where we remind ourselves our immortality. From dust we come, to dust we shall return. And as we go through Lent, we practice many of the diff different spiritual uh, disciplines, and part of that is prayer. And we do have some prayer centers that are going to be set up each week. Um, here at uh, Osage, they'll be changed out every Tuesday. And at St. Ansgar, they'll be changed out every Wednesday. So every opportunity is we've had one today for Ash Wednesday for people to come and just spend some time in prayer. There will be instructions on, on what to do, and you can spend as much time as you would like in those um, prayer centers. So keep that in mind. So I'm glad to have you here today. Um, I hope all of you have uh, picked up a, a, a thing of ashes for you. Um, they're in the little individuals. We'll do that later. We'll um, put them on together um, here tonight. So welcome, and glad you are all here today. Let me say one more thing about the service, and that is we will be doing the responses very softly if you um, will do them, and we'll also sing the hymns very softly so you can do that. So. Let us enter into worship with our moment of meditation. Be still and know God is God. Be still and know God is. Be still and know God. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness? Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is from no, Genesis have, 3. A hymn. Oh, a excuse hymn, me, an yeah. opening hymn.
first lesson is from Genesis chapter 3, the 19th verse. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Hear this um, poem by uh, Jan Richardson, Blessing the Dust for Ash Wednesday. For all those days, you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face towards the wind and be scattered to the four corners or sweep away by the, swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that, that lives within the ancient ashes, that comes to its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humil humility or for thinking we are less than what we are, but for claiming what God can do with the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Let us take now a few moments to silently reflect on both the scripture and the reflection. Our second lesson is from the book of Joel, chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes. Such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, consecrate this, the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast, 
Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Lent is a time to examine our hearts. It is a time when we are called to repent and turn our hearts towards God. It is a time to push away distractions and focus all the more on your relationship with God. As we begin Lent, this reading reminds us of this call. The Lord invites us today, saying, Return to me with your whole heart. When we stray from God, no matter how far we have gone, God is always inviting us back. God is a loving God with outstretched arms, longing for us to receive God's warm embrace. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in kindness. God calls us to acknowledge and to repent of our sins so that God can freely pour out forgiveness upon us. This reading reminds us that God desires our hearts. God loves us and wants us to be in relationship with us. Keep in mind this Lent that when we fall into sin, God is always right there to pick us back up and help us to get on back on our feet and get them under us once again. What do you need to repent of? God's grace is abundant, and there is no sin that God cannot forgive. Take time reflecting on where you have turned away from God. Confess those sins to God in prayer and ask for forgiveness. third lesson is from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning with the 20th verse. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you to not receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, 
in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, through glory known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is a powerful appeal from Paul to the Christians of Corinth which fits it in perfectly with the beginning of Lenten season. He reminds us that we are ambassadors for Christ. It is through us, through our words and actions, that God is seen by the rest of the world. That is a tremendous responsibility and something to be seriously reflected on, especially during this Lenten season. Paul points out that for our sake, God made Jesus who was altogether without sin, to be sin. In this sense that Jesus, that although sinless, one willingly enduring the, the effects of sin and evil, especially through his suffering and death on the cross. We might become the very holiness of God. In other words, we too are called to walk the same, the same way that Jesus did to be ready to suffer and to die as he did, in this more than any other thing we might say or do, we truly become ambassadors for Jesus Christ. But Paul begs, uh, begs the Corinthians and us that this tremendous act of God's love enacted through Jesus be not in vain. Lent is a time for us to contemplate deeply the meaning of Jesus' life, suffering, and death, for each one of us, and to reflect on what cha changes it cause, calls for us in, in the way that we live our lives of discipling now. Now is the acceptable time. Now is a day of salvation. For the Christian, the time of conversion and change is always now, and never more so than during the great season of Lent. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, beginning with the first verse. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. 
But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. In this passage from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. These are the three traditional pillars of Lenten observance. During Lent, we are encouraged to focus on prayer. This can be done by adding or increasing silent prayer, prayer time each day, taking time to pray as a family, attending church. We are also asked to fast during Lent. The purpose of fasting is to help us to focus our attention on God. And finally, almsgiving refers to an act of charity. This can include offering more of our time, talent, or other treasures in service of God. With all these practices of Lent, Jesus, is in, Jesus in the Gospel passage calls us to be humble and do them with the right intention of serving and worshiping God. What spiritual practice could you incorporate into your daily life? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christians have always observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare for Easter by a season of penance, fasting, and prayer. This season of 40 days provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for baptism into the body of Christ. It is also a time when persons who have committed serious sins and had been separated from the community of faith were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. The whole congregation is thus reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we will all be renewed in our baptismal faith. I invite you, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penance, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and, med and meditation on the Word of God, to make a right beginning as a mark of our mortality, 
Let us now come before our Creator and our Redeemer. You've all been given as a household, each household has been given a little thing of ashes. So if it unscrews, you'd open it, and then we'll bless it. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of immortality and penance, so we may re remember that only by your gracious gift we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, if you'll take and dip your fingers in it and get ashes on it, on your finger, and then I'm going to have you tell you what to do after that. And I want you to make a sign of the cross. Going down, I want you to repeat after me. Dust I came, go across, to dust I shall return. The almighty and merciful God, source of our salvation in Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that we turn from wickedness and live, live ex accepts, and accepts our repentance, forgives your sin, and restores you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, we stand now in that moment when we must confess that we are truly belong to you. You have created us, and even now, you are ready to create in us a new life. We spend pointless time trying to perceive our identity, and suddenly we are jolted to reality when we must face the fact that we have been formed from the dust of the earth, and to the dust we shall return. From beginning to end, we are your creation. And affirming it or not, we do belong to you. With the gift of freedom, we realize that largely we determine, we deter, that we determine the life that we shall live, but down deep we know that we are yours. Then we're able to live that life and affirm that, with, that we are your children as well as your creation. On this Ash Wednesday, we begin the unfolding story of the choices in life that another child of yours made. As we make the journey with him again, teach us something new about sacrifice. Rather than exercise us of um, denial of self, may we take inventory of our poten potential and sacrificial offering our lives to you as a service to your glory. Fill us with fresh insights as we renew the message and life of Christ. Let us learn that we don't have to burn ourselves out in order to experience your love. Your grace is freely extended to us, and we need only to accept it. As we leave here tonight with the mark of ashes in the shape of a cross on our forehead, we pray the imprint of the cross will penetrate our minds and, and hearts. Let us be aware that from dust, we, from dust uh, came life and even now you stand ready to raise us to new life from the ashes of our sin. If in penance we turn to you and accept your forgiving grace. We pray all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our song is uh, Have Thine Own Way. You can, again, softly sing it. Would you stand for the blessing? Go forth in the world in the strength of God's mercy to live and to serve in newness of life. May Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, bless and keep you. Amen.